I'm Elizabeth Murray and one of the things that I do is I love to garden and for me the garden is really one of the highest forms of art. It's an art that you can use plants, you use soil, you use weather. It's a whole creation. It has movement, it has time, it has color and texture and the garden matures over time unlike a painting. The garden is also a way where we can really become intimate with nature and we can use it as a portal into, I think, the divine or into uh, sacred space. One of the things I love about living in Monterey is gardening. I have always been a gardener and I've been a professional gardener here and I sometimes give some consultation on gardens. And I think one of the strongest ideas is to really respect our regionalism and to respect our native plants and our incredible trees, our Monterey cypress, our Monterey pines, our oak trees, trees that we can grow here that are so special, as well as our native materials like decomposed granite. And one of the great ways to learn about gardening, I think, in Monterey is to walk through the old historic adobes in downtown and to really look at how the old uh, original gardens were made with very little water. And in my garden, I actually collect rainwater and I have two 5,000 gallon cisterns on the property. And so I use that sparingly, but to help me um, water my plants. And I think gardening here is a great joy and it's, as anywhere, it has its challenges. And our challenges is really water. But we can learn to have beauty if we stick with the native plants and also hold our uniqueness of butterflies, for example. Uh, right now is the time of year for the monarchs to be traveling through. So we can choose plants to be host for our butterflies and our, our um, pollinators and really create these garden sanctuaries. For me, the plants that I love the most of Monterey are the trees, the Monterey cypress trees. They get sculpted by the winds, the uh, Monterey pines, when they're mature, how they're silhouetted against the sky, and our incredible oak trees. And I think that they deserve so much respect and love. And the mature ones are the ones that are really our grandfathers. And they create the most beautiful skyline. And unfortunately, a lot of people are afraid of the mature trees because they're afraid of them falling. But I think with good care, we can keep them. We can keep them by pruning them properly and watching for the beetles and the different problems that they have. They give us the power and the unitedness of our unique area. And if we look at the old paintings of Monterey, it's those trees next to the rock and the sea that really give us that uniqueness. There's all kinds of small perennials that we can grow. I love ones that, different salvias or or buckeyes that will, will attract the, the butterflies into the garden. There's a lot of non-native plants that are wonderful to have if you have the water. The Japanese anemones, or depends on the time of year, roses of course that are so gorgeous. But for myself personally, I like more of the wild with a little bit of the cultivated. I think that's a good way to live, to be on the wild side and to have some cultivation. And that's what Monet did. His gardens were very cultivated, but he was always gathering native plants and gathering uh, wild seed on his walks and throwing them into the garden. And that gives you spontaneity. It connects you to really where you're rooted. And if you only grow plants that came from other regions, that's not going to give you the uniqueness of place that you need. And it's not going to really support our pollinators and our our own birds as well. So I like using as many native plants as possible and, and just getting rid of all lawns. Lawns are, I know they're beautiful and they're green and they're nice for children to play on. But for our gardens, I think that we shouldn't really be growing them. We don't have the water and there's some a lot more interesting things we can grow. I have a meadow that I put in that is quite lovely and, and I also have some 
brick patios and places where I can teach. So there's some gravel areas. There's beautiful things you can do with gravel. And then really supporting our incredible trees.